Hi, my name is Sita Osteno, and I will be presenting our paper, Diamond, a Dynamic Motif Nodes Network Generative Model. Real-world networks are dynamic with connectivity changing over time. And network models provide us a way to study and analyze these networks. However, they have been traditionally modeled as static, ignoring temporal information. In dynamic networks, a graph snapshot is a time slice of a network at time t. Here in the first snapshot, edges are the great connections, active nodes are colored in blue, and white nodes have not joined the network yet. Then a dynamic network is a sequence of graph snapshots. Many models for temporal graphs generate the aggregate temporal graph or only generate the next time window for an existing graph. But synthetic networks are useful for exploring algorithmic behavior, benchmarking models, or sharing without divulging private data, for example. So we want a model that can generate synthetic dynamic networks similar to an observed network in graph structure and node behavior. And so we propose our model, dynamic motif nodes model, using these building blocks. Um, we use three node motifs for scalability and processing time. And we define motif node rules for each motif configuration. Our insights and motivation are that when we empirically analyze dynamic networks, the general pattern that we observed is that motifs disappeared and reappeared over time, and that groups of nodes would stay in the same motif structure. So if we saw a triangle, it would you know, eventually show up again as a triangle in the future. And then using motifs can capture dependencies that edges cannot. And the node rules help to place motif edges in the network and they can capture node behavior. So our model assumptions are that nodes in the network become active and remain that way. Nodes have a probability distribution over role types that they play in different motifs. Triplets have a single motif type over time. There is a distribution of motif types over the set of graphs. And motif occurrences over time are distributed exponentially with varying rate. In the generative process of our model, we first sample the active nodes. Um, we get their arrival times from their arrival rate lambda v. And then in time step one, these blue nodes are the active nodes. Then using the active nodes, we can determine the triplets that we can use to sample the motifs. The probability of a triplet having a motif type will depend on the node rule probabilities. So the probability of observing a triangle motif would depend on the probability that all three nodes have the equal three rule. Similarly, for a wedge motif, one node would be hub, the other two spokes. And for the one edge motif, one of the nodes outlier and the other two equal two rules. Then to sample the motifs, we'll use the expected counts for each motif type. And then we'll sample the motifs using the probabilities that I explained before uh, from a multinomial distribution. Then after sampling the motifs, we'll need to sample the note rules or assign them. And so in this example, let's assume that we have a wedge motif. We first normalize the hub roll probabilities among the three nodes. Then we sample which node will be the hub. And the other two nodes will have the spoke roll. Then we'll need to sample when these motifs will appear. 
So for each motif instance, we'll sample an interval rate that depends on the rates for that type. So from those rates, we sample each instance's interarrival rates. And then using those rates, we sample the time steps that they should run. We sample the note rows without replacement. So we need to update the counts by discounting the number of times each node has been assigned each row. And then we update the note row probability, probability distribution using the updated counts. Lastly, we can output the generated graph using the node arrival times, the motif edges, and the time steps that the motifs appear in. In our learning parameters process, we estimate or all our model parameters from a real world network G. However, the motif memberships are not observed. So in this toy example, we don't know which motif the edge CE belongs to. There are multiple wedges that lie on that edge. So the parameters that we learn, first is the node arrival rate. And we estimate it using the first time step each node had its first edge. Then we estimate the motif type proportions using the ratio of each motif type in the network. We estimate the motif type interval rates using the rates of each motif in sense. Then the node rolls probabilities using the counts that nodes at each roll. And since we don't observe the motif memberships, we'll need edge weights so that we can avoid overcounting in the parameter estimation. Now, in our evaluation, we need to compare the synthetic network against the observed network. In this example, G prime is the one with the active nodes in purple, and then the observed network G is the one with the blue active nodes. And so in static networks, we can directly use the metrics to compare both networks. But how can we evaluate on dynamic networks? So to evaluate graph structure, we can measure each graph snapshot using the metrics. But how do we compare these sets of values for both graphs? Taking the average and median statistics can be misleading. So we propose to use the KS test statistics because it quantifies the distance between the two empirical distributions among two samples. And it can also capture variability in the values. Another challenge is evaluating the behavior of nodes in a dynamic network. Um, others have ignored this aspect or they have simply looked at the average degree per uh, time step we, however, propose to use node aligned metrics, and we refer to a node's distribution of values over time. Additionally, um, given that nodes in the generated graph might not correspond to those in the observed graph, we consider the interquartile range of values over time for each metric. And then we perform a two-dimensional KS test using the first and third quartile values. These are the sets of metrics that we use to evaluate. Within the graph structure metrics, um, the S metric measures the extent to which a graph has a like structure. And then in our note behavior, metrics, um, the temporal degree distribution, we're taking the set of degrees for a node over all the graph snapshots. 
And then the activity rates, uh, we're measuring how often it participates in an edge. Data sets that we evaluate on, uh, we use three email networks for NRUN, a European institution, and the Democratic National Committee. And then we have uh, another data set with a subset of wall posts on Facebook and one with a private message network at UC Irvine. The baseline models that we compare to are the static networks with link dynamics model. This model generates a static graph and then a series of events or edge interval times. The activity-driven network model starts with an empty graph at each time step and then connects active nodes with a triadic closure mechanism. Lastly, CAGGEN is a deep graph generative model that generates synthetic temporal random walks. Here we show the results for the EU email data set with the graph structure and node behavior. We show the case statistic where lower values better and our model diamond is the light violet color here. Diamond clearly performs the best on the graph structure metrics, but in the node behavior metrics, it's not as clear. So to compare the models more easily, we calculate the mean reciprocal rank using the average case statistic for each of these two sets of metrics. Here we show the mean reciprocal rank. Um, a higher value is better. In the first table for graph structure, our model diamond outperforms the baselines. Then in the second table for node behavior, our model performs the best on the Enron emails and the Facebook data sets. SNLD performs better on the EU emails data set, but Diamond is a very close second. And it also performs the best on the college message data set. Lastly, ADN performs uh, better on the DNC emails data set. So in our graph structure evaluation, Diamond creates the graph structure most similar to all data sets. In our evaluation of node behavior, um, Diamond can generate the most similar on the Enron and Facebook data sets. And it's also very close second on the EU emails data set. The college message network has large star structure. And since SNLD uses degree distribution learned from the data set, this can explain why it performed better in the node aligned metrics. And the DNC emails network has high clustering and the ADN baseline directly models node activation rates using sample node degrees. And so it performs better on data sets with high clustering. To summarize, our model Diamond is a motif-based dynamic network generative model that can generate synthetic networks. Using motifs helps to create better graph structure overall. The motif node roles can help represent the temporal node behavior. And then in evaluation metrics, just using the average and median degrees per snapshot uh, doesn't capture the individual behavior of nodes. We need node aligned metrics to evaluate the topological connectivity and the temporal activity. Our use of the KS test with the interquartal range is an initial effort on adapting graph structure metrics to dynamic networks. Thank you.